you got this article courtesy of Hypebeast featuring some woman called Helen Kirkham. So it talks about deconstructing the MX90. And the reason why I clicked it because the MX90 is one of my top five trainers of all time. So to see somebody deconstructing the greatest sneaker, I think one of the greatest sneakers of all time um, is pretty offensive to me, especially when it looks completely terrible. And I think just speaks to the overall need for us as a culture, as a scene, to stop with the deconstructing, to stop tearing things apart and putting them back together in these really horrible, um, crass and downright disrespectful ways um, and just learn to maybe make our own things, right? Make new original things. This is just, I don't know, I'm kind of bored of this. There's a couple of people who do this really well and I think they should be left to do it on their own. There's that girl that remakes everything so makes them into bags and shorts and shit. She seems to be actually talented. I'm not sure who she is. I'm not sure her name. It might be the Architects brand ambassador girl or somebody else, I don't know, but there's another one too. And obviously Virgil does his way of doing it in the kind of commercial level. But I think everyone else should just leave it alone because that little picture here like look how terrible this looks like what is that like what are you doing you're, you're destroying a perfectly decent colorway of an mx90 and turning it into something horrendous and look at that those are that's proper crazy eyes isn't it that's the eyes of somebody that's going to take your mx90 and say babe trust me i'm going to make something really nice and then you turn around and it's this that you get presented for your birthday and you have to pretend like you like it <laughs> like honestly man it's shocking it's courtesy of hype he says in a world obsessed with keeping hype sneakers box fresh helen um kirkham disrupts are you of course disrupting you already know disrupts with her handmade one-off masterpiece Pieces. From her London studio, Kirkham takes some of the industry's most loved sneakers apart and upscales our wasteful habits into new pairs that subvert conventional trends. Subverting, yeah, that's definitely something, isn't it? I don't, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, for her sneakers are less about the name brands and cosigns and more so about personality that mean to you, <laughs> mate. I don't know, man. The, 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 per, the only personality this looks like is like somebody who's has a dog that don't keep on a leash. That's what that looks like. Chewing up your shoes as you're sleeping. Um, this is what makes her special. At Helen Kirkham Studios, some of your favorite pairs, including the Off White Nike, of course, included it, are turned into something completely new as a vessel for self expression, worn and loved by people who wear and love their sneakers. It's not authentic experience that champions craftsmanship and celebrate individuality and puts the subject of of making back into a sneaker production i don't know maybe it's just me right but if i'm going to if i'm to, if i'm like handsy which this girl clearly is i don't really like the stuff that she's doing but let's just say she's a handsy crafty kind of person wouldn't you just want to test yourself by making your own thing from the ground up or maybe utilizing parts and bits and bobs from other shoes to basically make your perfect sneaker especially now with all these um you know um fugazi alibaba sort of workshops and factories that exist where you can basically get a shoe made for you with different designs on the side wouldn't that be a better use of your time and your skills and maybe a better opportunity to showcase your talents as opposed to destroying you know perfectly decent trainers made by the world's greatest designers in an effort to sort of what capitalize on this upscaling um what was it what they call it this thing this stupid thing they keep saying it's that sustainability in the sneaker scene what is it called again it's a word they, they use here upcycle yeah upcycling stuff it's like what it's a if anything this just creates more trash because this is definitely more of an in the moment trend thing that more than likely in a couple of months will just be relegated to a vintage shop somewhere no one's going to buy it because it looks terrible and you don't know how to lace it up properly and it'll end up in the scrap heap somewhere or end up up some turtle's nose do you know what i mean like it's just not worth the time it's just what is this like nonsense um let's continue aside from personality and storytelling there's the okay um everything kirkham touches has a signature look and feel and in many ways her approach can be likened to the cult impact of the mx90 get out of here fuck off no way it can be really that like, what okay like what what is that like she turned it into like one of, what was that nike vapor boot that had a swoosh to the front it honestly looks terrible the panels don't look great the stitching is awful obviously because the shoe's been recycled the riff, like this is like a terrible um sort of copy and reinterpretation re and reinterpretation of what virgil's doing basically it's like a bad version of it i don't like it it's like a it's like a it's like a it's like some tiktok kid decided to start doing sneaker customization you know what right I, i'd much again i'd much prefer to i don't i'd take a john geiger um you know snake skin covered jordan one again on air force one over these stuff on the over this i honestly would i've had enough of this 
upscaling. Anyway, let's get into what you said in the interview. What got into sneakers? It's quite an interesting story because I was into traditional footwear to start with. I started in the did exactly. And you see, whenever someone says something like this, it's quite an interesting story. It, you know they're going to start waffling. There's no, definitely not a sneakerhead. Definitely weren't really about the shoes life. But then, you know, you end up taking a course in uni. You end up stumbling into this because it's easy money. And when you're a girl, you know, you can capitalize on it because there's not many girls around. So could have turned it for being involved. But yeah yeah anyway i started in Northampton. i did brogue dress shoes and i think it was my personal style that got me to sneakers i went to discover how they were made because i didn't know because i'd always done traditional shoes so she could make brogues and dress shoes why doesn't she just make her own trainers honestly she's clearly got talent to make stuff and put stuff together because it's not easy to tear even though it looks ugly to tear something apart and put it together and make it look somewhat wearable isn't easy to do so she's definitely got a skill and a good hand for it why don't you just make your own shoe from the ground up my girl Anyway, um, that's why a lot of my work has a tactile and handmade feel because I come from a place that kind of traditional footwear. So by cutting the sneakers up and rebuilding them, that's how you start to understand how they were made. Yawn, 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 yawn. I went to get sneakers to cut up because um, I knew the pattern was different. I remember the technician of mine, when I told him I wanted to do sneakers, he said, you don't want to do sneakers because they're not a real shoe. <laughs> I've always been interested in shoe concepts that constitutes, uh, she probably should have listened to him, you know. When I started unpicking them and playing with the proportions and constructions, I learned so many interesting things about the shoes themselves. And that was really, and that was it really. What's the difference? Did you notice traditional shoes? The concept of repair and mending is really grounded. You'd always get your shoes resold, but in the sneaker industry, that didn't really exist when I started to process. I was interested in it if I'd create a sneaker that was so visibly tactile and handmade that you had no choice but to be confronted with the, the idea that it was made by a person. Because sometimes sneakers appear to be shelves bright and shiny and they devoid of the making. So I really wanted it to bring an element of sneaker culture. Mate, you know what, right? we actually like bright and shiny shoes there is a real big pushback against this whole like dis you know uh artificially distressed trainers where they kind of you know purposely make the soul yellow and maybe add some weird crumbling effects like the new jordan 2s that virgil has coming out no one really wants that you want your shoe to just look of good quality right you'd much rather want a jordan one that's actually made with some good levers um some high quality levers sorry was actually made with a good mold um a mold maybe similar to some of the jordans that came out in the 80s not much to ask but hey if you're paying upwards of 120 pound per pair you'd want them to be the shape that you kind of remember them being on the various scans that you stumbled across on sneaker forums and whatnot and you want to basically have a chance to wear that shoe again in, in nowadays but what you don't want is a shoe that's been purposely made to look like it's old or a shoe that's been taken apart and made to look like somebody made it by hand like who wants that if you want a handmade shoe just buy a handmade shoe don't buy handmade trainers like i don't know man I wanted to propose an idea of something worn, something secondhand, as a something new and beautiful and challenge the idea of newness and always wanting the next thing that's quite apparent in sneaker culture. Yeah, this definitely challenging, is it, mate? This is more than challenging. This is essentially, I don't know, man. This is just a waste of time. Have you ever wanted to product, um, have you ever wanted to put your product ideology into a bigger scale production? Yeah, this is a good question. When I started, I was adamant that the sneakers had to be produced in this way. The concept of something being made to order makes it exclusive and really personal. And I actually offer a service where people can send old sneakers and I'll make them a new shoe out of their old sneakers so that they can have stories embedded into the material. That element is so personal that it has to be a one on one. <laughs> Mate, who's sending this girl her old, the old sneakers so she can turn them into flipping, you know, stuff that came out of, I don't know, a flipping Nutribullet or something like, God damn it. However, collaborating with brands is another way that I can make my work more accessible, which is good. I just don't understand why these people don't just go and make their own shoe. I don't really know. I, the sneaker customizers are just one of the most bizarre bunch of people I've ever seen. They waste so much time cutting up and putting together these nike shoes in an effort to get the attention of brands who are you know over over um, over subscribed to people that want a job there how many people are sending in cvs to work at nike and adidas and all these big companies right and, and the thing about these people too it's not as if they want to work in footwear because if you want to work in footwear in general you can probably go to like a lesser known brand like a mizuno like a diodora like an elisi and probably end up getting a pretty decent design job there but everybody wants to work for the same old you know big ticket brands you know the nikes the adidas and whatnot maybe the reeboks which are again over inundated with people applying there and they make these concoctions these frankenstein monsters of shoes in an effort to gain the attention of people who are generally either going to ignore you or just jack your idea and make it themselves and give you no credit. 
That's essentially what's going to happen. Why don't just use your time and your resources and your obvious talent to make your own shoe from the ground up? If you and if again and if you're good enough as a designer and people vibe with your stuff, you'll probably still sell it anyway. There's a real need, there's a real kind of desire. Look at the amount of people on Instagram remaking um, their own version of flipping Jordan ones, that are making absolute killings off of them. Of course, Nike kind of scuppered that by filing that patent and basically being on top of it. But for the most part, that shows that there's definitely a desire for people to have something a little bit different, a little bit custom made, a little bit um, special, bespoke, tailored, whatever it may be. Go out and make your own version of it. What is this nonsense? Like, no one wants to see this. We've already got people doing it at the highest level, like a Virgil, who's able to kind of do this way of kind of remixing, reworking stuff and twisting it by 3% that design and methodology that he has. But this is just awful. I don't know. I just think it doesn't work in this canvas. As a designer, what makes you grav gravitate towards an MX90? And my first experience ever night, I remember all the sister having a pair and they were white and she was getting beaten up and not white at all. I remember thinking that she was a pinnacle of this cool girl with these shoes without realizing it has always been in my life when I first started getting into sneakers because I've never a sneakerhead, non sneakerheads designing sneakerhead shoes. And imagine a non sneakerhead trying to sell these shoes to a sneakerhead and not really understanding the culture but thinking you can educate them about sustainability and upscaling by first of all no no sneakerhead worth their salt is ever going to have a nike mx90 in this condition in the first place right right with the heel all fucked up like that no one it doesn't exist you're not going to have a shoe that's going to look that beat up and if it is that beat up you're just going to bury them wear them for football or use them as shoes that you do your kind of chores with around the house but you're not going to send them to a hipster designer to upscale them for you and charge you what 100 euros like 200 euros like if <laughs> What do you find when you cut them up? I love exposing the inside of the shoe. You can always show the glue, the foam. Oh, just come on, man. Like, what is this, man? This is like, she's, she, she graduated from the Virgil School of, of Sneaker Design, isn't it? Clearly. Like, it's just a waste of everybody's materials and fabrics in general. I, I don't get it, man. I think everyone needs to stop with all this upscaling stuff. Just, again, take your talents and actually make your own shoes from the ground up. If people like them, they'll buy them. But allow destroying classic shoes, man. No one needs to see that. 